first story. Narcissistic parents demand, I break up with my boyfriend and threaten to disown me just because they don't like him. I am looking for experience and opinions. All are welcome. I'll try to make a long story short. I am an only child, and my current boyfriend and I have been dating for six years, starting when I was 19, and he was 20. We met at junior college, where we started dating, and after that, we went to different UCs, but within an hour of each other. My parents met him early on by joining us at dinner. Everything seemed to go well. Then soon after, we went to his parents' house, who live about two hours from my parents, so I could meet his family, and after learning this, my mom told me how hurt she was that we didn't come to see them too. I expressed that this weekend was for me to meet his family, but it was clear that she felt almost betrayed. Fast forward. My parents invite me up to our cabin, and my boyfriend joins. We took my car because it was already loaded with laundry etc. After we arrive, my dad pulls me aside and pretty much quietly yells at me how wrong it is that I drove, and that we took my car. He's the man, he should be driving. This started everything going forward on a sour note. The cabin is in Tahoe it gets cold in the winter, so my boyfriend wore a sweatshirt with his hood up during some of the time at the cabin. My parents to this day, see this as weird and rude, as well as a reason they don't like him. As we continue our relationship, it's clear that my parents don't like him. But they can't really give up what I would call good or justifiable reasons. They'll say he's just not a good fit for the family. They don't tell me to stop dating him because they can't. I'm an adult but they do tell me that I need to keep them and him separate. They don't want to really hear about him, and he's not welcome at their house or cabin. He's never cheated on me or abused me. He has no drug problems etc. Nothing that a normal parent would see as a problem. Eventually, it became an ultimatum given to me by my parents. They'd tell me that if you continue to date him, eventually it will be either him or us, and you'll have to choose. Among other things, they would tell me that he'd never be an attorney, which is what he wanted to do and insinuate that he probably wouldn't be much of anything at all. After my undergrad, I started working at a financial firm. He graduated from undergrad at UC Berkeley, and was accepted to law school across the country. We were always very serious about each other, and made the decision to travel long distances, until he graduated and moved back to California. My boyfriend has since graduated from law school, moved home, and took the bar last month. He starts work this October, and has had a contract since last year. They have known about this as well. Now, six years into our relationship, I call my parents and tell them that we are going to be moving in together. About 20 minutes later, I get a text from my mom saying that she doesn't want to rain on my parade, but that this path excludes her and my dad from my future. They love me, but they can't be in my life if I choose to be with my boyfriend. I told them I would never understand. Since then, they have sent me more and more text messages saying stuff like, we feel like we're losing our daughter. This is heartbreaking, etc. All at the same time, including that this is my choice and my fault. I texted my parents that I thought my boyfriend and I should come over and talk. That texting about this kind of thing is stupid, but not to be patronized or belittled. And if it turned to screaming, we would leave. My parents then replied that they wanted to see me face to face to talk, but that my boyfriend wasn't allowed. My boyfriend even called my father the night of the initial. We can't be part of your life. Text to try and talk or meet up and see if there was a way to talk through any legitimate concerns. My dad did not answer and responded until a week plus later, only to text him that they haven't really ever liked him, and that he wants to work through it with me alone, and it's mine and my boyfriend's fault for not trying to address things earlier. Among other ridiculous reasons to not like my boyfriend were, Berkeley isn't a man's college, my dad. One time in college, my professor lost my final exam, and when I found out via my final grades, and was frantically calling her to figure out what happened, my parents told my boyfriend. See, this is why we didn't want her to have a boyfriend in college. They've found ways to blame him for everything. The only thing that ever had any merit was that he wasn't working yet. Well this was because he was going to school to be a lawyer. Apparently, marrying someone who will make a lot of money is a bad thing. My boyfriend is the nicest, calmest and most peaceful person ever, and he loves me more than anything. But apparently their pride is more important than being wrong and accepting him. I guess I'm just trying to figure out if this is normal. Or if it's as wrong as it feels to my boyfriend and me. At its same post, two days later, my boyfriend, as well as my parents and myself, are of the same race. Somewhat similar financial status as well. There are no important details left out, I promise. I wanted objective feedback. Believe me, if there was more, my parents would make it known to me, and I would have included it in this post. Relevant comments.
at the number of people expressing bewilderment and frustration on her behalf. I just want to say thank you to everyone here. I will sleep better tonight, knowing that even a brief description of this story produced replies almost identical to what some of our closest friends have also said. More on the background of parents. Mom was a career politician. Dad was a firefighter and politician. Both conservative Republicans. I'm an only child. Not close to aunts and uncles. The only surviving grandparent is Dad's mom. She was happy to hear that I had tried to get the four of us to talk. I have to now tell her that they declined the offer. She often tells me that she is very sorry that I've been put in this position. They won't compromise, so don't waste your time. I have come to the same conclusion. Me going alone is only their last-ditch attempt to bargain and manipulate my opinion. Leaving him out so he can't speak or defend himself is just so they can gang up on me and control the narrative. In reply to, there has to be something else you're not telling us. Lol no, he's white, and we're white. I promise it's the whole truth. Parents are conservative, and think anything that deviates from what they would do must be wrong. BF went to school for longer to do law, and dad thinks he should have started working at age 13. Like he did. A boyfriend is definitely open-minded and moderate. Horrible, I know. How is boyfriend with parents OP? Yeah, no, my boyfriend is the best. He's never said a bad word about my parents either, despite how awful they've been to him. His parents are wonderful. His dad, who is not a touchy-feely person, even called me and explained how sad it is that my parents are doing this, and that he and his wife love me and my boyfriend and support us. Update. Two and a half months later. Hi everyone. I am updating you all on this long-awaited resolution. After many more hurtful texts from my parents that said they can't accept my partner, and that it doesn't matter if he's a good fit for me. If he's not a good fit for my family, then it's never going to work out. I went over in person to meet with them and pick up my legal documents. They made it clear that my boyfriend was not welcome, and that this was a family matter they needed to speak with only me about. Clear manipulation obviously, so I went alone. I'm on my way, I know what I think and how I feel, and I'm very sure of what I plan on saying. Thanks to Reddit, I have additional confirmation that I'm not crazy, wrong, or a bad person, but they are in fact in the wrong. It was strange walking into your parents' house and feeling like you're meeting strangers. It kind of felt like having a 26-year-long relationship and being broken up with via text, then having to go pick up your SHT and memories from your ex's house. Except that your ex is your parent. After about an hour of small talk, we got into the nitty-gritty conversation about the elephant in the room. A previous text that week said, We don't expect to change your mind. We just want to talk. But it's clear that this in-person meeting was a last-ditch attempt to shake me from my reality and into theirs. They came at me from every angle. He's not a man's man. I don't respect him. I hate him. He's taking away the most precious thing in our lives. How could you not hate someone like that? Dad, even at some point physically threatening him. My mom was either agreeing or adding little tidbits and reminders of things she didn't like about him. Some of which are things I mentioned in my previous post about when I went to meet his family and didn't see her or my dad either. Mentioning also that she doesn't like that I made the first move to talk to my boyfriend and not the other way around. You get the gist. It was all-out war on my BF. They tell me I'm depriving them of a son-in-law. They say he is selfish for not breaking up with me years ago, when he realized that my parents didn't like him. They even just started blindly throwing out shots like, I don't even know if he has any friends. Like WTF mom and dad, of course you don't SHT about him, because you've made me keep my relationship out of earshot for six years. But I digress. It ends up being a three-hour conversation where I spoke for all of maybe five minutes with my heart rate at 150. The whole time thanks for reminding me of that Apple Watch. They also don't fail to mention a few other shining points, such as. We knew you would put this on us. This is not an ultimatum. We are just reacting to your decisions and choices. Their reply to my saying, This is not my choice. This is an ultimatum you've given me, and neither my boyfriend nor I want this. We knew you would make us the bad guys because we're not hash team boyfriend's name. Any of your friends and family who say we will come around, or it will get better are lying to you and saying what you want to hear. They asked me why they should like or be impressed by my boyfriend, and I gave them various accolades. Dad replied, education doesn't impress me. I told them how wonderful he was through some of the toughest times in my life college, and how he supported and kept me sane when even my parents were coming down on me about how I wasn't doing enough. They said, that's what any boyfriend would do. Um, um, no, mom and dad, it's not. And the two of you certainly were making me feel worse that entire time. 
They said that because my BF's dad helped him get through school by paying his tuition, he's had everything in his life handed to him. Dad said, I think your mom is having an epiphany about who you're becoming. Like I'm some monster. They said, We feel like you're not listening to us, because I'm not just blindly agreeing to break up with my boyfriend. Dad said, This kind of thing happens all the time, as if that makes it normal or justified. At the end, I have to break the news that, in between all of the hurtful texts and prior to this meeting, my boyfriend and I signed a lease and moved in together. Nothing they were going to say was going to sway me otherwise. Even they said that. So we had taken the leap and made the move the weekend before this meeting. I was commuting about 20-30 minutes before the move, and my commute is the same after the move. The only difference is that we now live in the same city that my boyfriend a new attorney with crazy early and late hours works in. Believe me, I had all kinds of requirements prior to this move. It has to be safe have an in-unit washer and dryer, safe parking, etc. And it's only for a year or two, while we save money so we can buy a home. Contrary to my parents' beliefs, I'm capable of making rational decisions. I tell them first that we sign the lease, and where it is, you know, to try and lighten the blow that I am outright disobeying them. They start going off about, oh of course, making it easy on him again. They saw me always going to my BF's house as me catering to him, even though the only reason was because we were never comfortable being together at their house. Then of course, he became essentially banished. So they see this move as me being some smitten teenage idiot. Not about how this is a relationship with compromise. They tell me that my commute is going to be brutal. And that I'm lying to myself if I think it's not. Again, I have already been doing it for a week. I know it's not any worse. It's a prettier drive even. But it's clear that I can't slowly ease into it. And I have to just rip off the bandage because they are straight up wrong. And trying to convince me that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I say. I've already been doing it for a week. We moved in last weekend. They are just dumbfounded. Well, like, I thought you guys said you weren't planning on changing my mind. So why am I so surprised that I just went ahead and made my choice? My mom starts crying. My dad keeps saying, You effed up, kid. It's about 10 p.m. at this point. So now that they know I have a slightly longer drive home, they are kind of sweeping me out the door so I can get home before it gets too late. My mom gives me this big, sobbing hug. At this point, I've run out of tears. I was crying throughout the entire conversation. But at this point, I was just over the bullshit. My dad, who rarely even tells me that he loves me, gives me this awkward, desperate hug too, which just kind of makes me roll my eyes. I get in the car and drive home, just totally exhausted and confused. Truthfully, they did a good job of again making me question my own thoughts and choices. But I get home and just start spilling everything that they said to my boyfriend. He's not surprised. But as I said in my last post, he remains Swiss in all of this and doesn't say anything shtty about them. He just holds me close and lets me vent. Something else that came up during our lovely three-hour discussion was my anxiety. I have previously shared with them that I think they are a huge source of it and have been throughout my childhood as well. Prior discussions have always gone nowhere. You had it so easy. We don't ask that much of you etc. Clearly, she is not listening to me. So I brought it up again in this discussion. How my parents are a huge source of anxiety, and my boyfriend is a calm rock in all of it. I'm so grateful he's such a great partner. My dad screams at me about how he never laid a effing hand on me, and how he was physically disciplined as a child, and that he can't own that he, and they could have anything to do with my being an anxious person. He even says, you need effing therapy. Like yes dad, thank you, I sure do, and also f you. She also said, I have a hard time swallowing that I had anything to do with your anxiety. You're going to have to work out those demons with yourself. All of this to say, the answer you've all waited for is that I moved in with my boyfriend. I'm keeping mom and dad at arm's length, and I have also started therapy. It's 26 years of emotional abuse and narcissism to unpack and learn from, but I'm working through it. The guilt tripping and lack of boundaries are so real, and have been so real for forever. I know my situation isn't as bad as others, and is also worse than others, but for all of you out there in similar situations, seek therapy. It is a really good thing. There's so much behavior to unlearn and grow from. Even if you don't think it's that bad, and that you're doing fine, see a therapist if you can. Your abusers have learned behavior too. They have learned how to get to you, and how to manipulate you, whether it's vindictive or not. They have learned how to make you do what they want, and think what they think. And then they know how to make you feel horrible about doing anything differently. Seek counsel from family and friends, whose advice you trust, seek therapy. And above all, trust yourself. I still get very emotional about all of this. It's still a very fresh wound. I mourn the relationship I had with my mom, 
and the one I will never have with my dad. My health is definitely suffering at the moment from all of the stress, but I'm working on getting my mental health back, and I know my body will follow. Breaking the wheel is hard and terrifying. It's like being a cage-trained puppy forever, and finally being allowed to go outside, but outside is unknown. The crate is all you know, and even though you know the crate is confining and freedom is in front of you, it's all so unfamiliar, uncertain and frightening. You know what's behind you, and it's easy to want to run back to it. But no matter what's in front of you, it's better than the crate. The crate is not living for yourself. It is living for someone else. So go out and make your own life. I hope this story can help someone else out there like me, who is seeking validation about their feelings and situation. Thank you again to all the Redditors who shared their thoughtful insight and advice. It truly got me through the most difficult days of my life. Internet. 1. Entitled Parents. 0. Relevant Comments. OP clarifies. They only know the city. I did not share my address with them. Are you an only child? I am. Second story. OP lashed out on her brother, without knowing how abusive he was to her brother. My 20F father passed away last week. It was very sudden and unexpected at 44 years old. I think I still haven't fully realized it yet. His funeral will be next weekend. My siblings and I have been making arrangements in our group chat. It's been mostly my sister 23F and me planning the burial, as well as how we'd clean out his flat. Our brother 25 hasn't involved himself aside from listing the things he wants to take from the flat. Since there is no will, we decided to split everything between the three of us. We were on a video call this morning, and were discussing decorations etc. And where to host the funeral meal after the church. My brother then said he didn't care what we chose because he wouldn't attend anyway. My sister looked shocked, and I told him he didn't really mean that. We had a fight. I called him selfish and disrespectful for not wanting to go. He said he only wanted to get the things he still had at our dad's place, and that he wouldn't pretend like he was a good father just because he was dead. Then he hung up. My sister agrees that he's acting really selfish, but thinks he might still come around if we give him time. My brother and father always had a rocky relationship, but we're still a family and should be there for each other. My boyfriend said I should apologize and accept my brother's choice. I just think he's being disrespectful to the person who raised us. I know he wasn't perfect, but he did his best, and this behavior is very childish. Edit. Sometime that day first off, thank you all for commenting. I've seen a few people mention the relationship between my dad and brother. When I described it as, Rocky, I did simplify it. My dad was 19 and my brother's mom was 17 when they had my brother. She didn't want a child, so our dad became a single parent. Considering his age and lack of a support system, my dad did make mistakes that he admitted to, and also said he regretted. My brother and dad are very much alike. They're both headstrong, and can be a little short-tempered when things don't work out as planned. That wasn't a good mix during my brother's teenage years. They had a lot of fights back then. Eventually, my brother moved out soon after turning 16, and from what I know, they've had semi-regular contact about once or twice a month. I don't know the full story of course as I was 10 years old when he moved out. I hope this makes sense. I tried to put in all the information that I thought might be relevant. I have texted my brother an apology, which he hasn't read yet. I also asked him if we could talk, because I would like to hear his side of things. As many of you have pointed out, there might be more to their relationship that I'm not aware of. OP is voted YTA, but softly. People correctly say, there is probably more to their relationship. Update. Next day. TW. Child abuse hey everyone. Yesterday I made a post where I was voted the RC hole unanimously. I accept that, and have since apologized to my brother. He called me last night, shortly after I edited my post. It was a long and emotionally draining phone call, but I'm glad that I now know the truth. We talked about our father, and I asked him for the truth about their relationship. As almost everyone predicted, there was a lot going on behind the scenes that I wasn't aware of. The first thing is that my dad was actually an alcoholic. I guess I was aware that he would drink regularly, but it never registered in my mind that he might have a problem. My brother said it always seemed like he was trying to keep it under control around me and my sister. A lot of their fights were about petty things that escalated to the point where they both got physical. My dad is out of anger, and my brother is in self-defense. He recalled a few specific instances where my dad would get angry and physical and immediately apologize once he realized what he had done. Most times, it happened when my sister and I were already sleeping. The story of how he moved out is a similar one. They had a fight that ended with my dad punching my brother in the face and breaking his nose. My brother decided he'd had enough and moved in with his girlfriend and her mom the next day. 
After he told me all this, I was shocked and apologized again for my behavior. He told me he forgives me because I didn't know, and that not everything he remembered was bad. He said he had a lot of good memories with our dad. He said our dad tried to get sober for us and often succeeded, but relapsed every time. He said he'd started therapy, and it helped him see things in a different way. He doesn't forgive our dad, but understands that he didn't have it easy and really did try to do his best, even if that wasn't enough, he said. He was a piece of SHT, but he stuck around when he could have abandoned me too. I am paraphrasing here because of translation. He won't be going to the funeral, but he won't hold a grudge against my sister and me for going. At the end probably because he didn't want to end it on a depressing note. He told me what his girlfriend the same one he's been dating since he was a teenager and a wonderful person was expecting. They haven't told anybody yet because it's still early. But my brother said if the baby is a boy, he would like to give him our father's name as a middle name. He said he was sad that his child would never get to meet its grandfather and wanted to honor the good memories that way. I think it's a very sweet thing to do. That was it, basically. I guess I have to come to terms with the fact that I didn't wholly know my dad and that there are things I can't change. I'll probably call my mom this week as well she moved back to her own country after she and my dad broke up and ask her about my dad. Though I know what my dad could be like, I'll still try to remember him as the person he was to me. Thank you all for reading and commenting on my original post. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.